when I left secondary school, I had no real idea what I was going to be doing. I really wanted to become an actor. I really wanted to act and to be in films and TV and all those sorts of things. And uh, I left school. I auditioned for drama school a few times and didn't get in. And it was really heartbreaking and really gutting and I didn't really know what to do. I ended up working part time at a cinema. And uh, whilst I was working at that cinema, I got free posters. I got to see free films, got discount off food and hot dogs and all those great things that you really want in life. But it wasn't quite still what I wanted to be doing with my life. And uh, I got a phone call from a theatre company based in York. Um, and they're a Christian theatre company called Riding Lights. And they rang me up and they said, we've heard about you um, through someone, that you, someone else that you know has recommended you to us. Uh, would you be up for auditioning for us just to see um, whether there's something we could work on together? And I was like, that sounds amazing. Yes, great, wonderful. And I went to audition and at the end of it, they were like, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, we feel maybe you'd be really suited to this tour that we're doing, which is like a community tour. You go around the UK and you go into schools and you do workshops and you do performances around churches and schools and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay, thank you. Um, let me know if anything else comes up, but that doesn't. Re I don't. I don't really want to do that. But thank you. Um, just keep keep in contact, I guess. And they were like, okay. Well, fair enough. And then a few months later, I get a phone call from them again. I'm like, oh, hello. I, hoping that maybe there's something else that's come up. And they go, oh, we've been praying about it, and we really feel that God is is putting you on our hearts, and really feel like God you know, wants you to be part of this tour. Would you, would you reconsider and join this tour? I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do it. So I said, no, again. And then it got to January, which must have been just about when they were about to start um, rehearsing for this play. And they rang me again. They went, Look, one of the actors can't do the full tour. In fact, they can't do the first month. Would you be able to just fill in for him for the first month of it? And I was like, oh, well, okay, yeah, why not? It's only a month. What, what, what could I lose from doing a month? And they're like, great, could you start on this date? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And I'm like, oh, good, because I really want to make sure that you're part of the rehearsal process and that you get to go into prison at the same time as everyone else. And I went, sorry, just, just back up there. Did you did you just say prison? And they were like, yeah, yeah, you'll be going into prisons as well as schools and churches. And I went, hmm, OK. OK. I did not realise that when I said yes to this thing. I had no idea I was going to go into prisons. And the thought of it absolutely terrified me. And actually, all the way through the rehearsal process up to the first time we went into a prison to do a show and a workshop with the prisoners, I was like petrified like like shaking like really nervous like getting all dry throated and all those sort of things and uh, we walk into the prison you have to go through like a load of checks at the security um gates and there's it's like your heart's pounding and you get into the little building where we were performing and and it was like oh the nerves and then they come in and they're quite loud and they're quite intimidating and you're going oh my word like what am i doing what god why am i here what's happening and uh, they sit down and we start a performance and they're laughing away and they're, they're loving it and clapping and cheering and shouting out. And it's, it's a weird experience. And, uh, and I was still absolutely petrified all the way through that performance. I was convinced one of them was going to stand up and I don't know. I had no idea what was going to happen. I suppose my only experience of prison had been through TV and film, which obviously always shows the worst case scenario and not necessarily the truth. And the truth is that afterwards, after we did our performance and we had to do a workshop with them where we got them to act out their life story and uh, they they acted it out with us and they were really great fun. And actually, by the end of it, I kind of forgot that I was in prison. I kind of forgot that I was working with prisoners who were in there for all sorts of different reasons and I started to see them more as humans, which obviously they were, obviously. They were just like you and I, like prisoners are no different. They, they have families, they have lives, they have um, emotions, they have all those sorts of things. Which sounds silly, obviously, obviously they do. But when you're in that situation and when you're thinking about it, you, you, you kind of build up this misconception, this um, false idea of who they are. And 
across my year, I went into various prisons and performed various times. And each time I was very nervous before going in. But by the end of it, I absolutely loved it. And it was always the highlight of the, the tour. It was always the highlight of the week. Whatever week we did a prison, it was always the highlight. And at the end of the first tour, they were like, the, the theatre company were like, would you like to do the second year? Would you like to do it again and do it properly and do the full, full year? And I was like, no, I would not. <laughs> and, um, and I said no twice again. And then they asked me again and I went, do you know what? Yeah, OK, let's do it. I would not have known what it would be like to perform in a prison if I had not said yes. And I know I kept saying no. I was a bit like Jonah, I guess in the story like I kept saying no despite God obviously being part of it and wanting me to be doing this tour I kept saying no until I was worn down and went do you know what yes I will and ended up it being one of the best experiences of my life doing that sometimes I think we put ourselves into prisons we put ourselves into like a metaphorical a, a, a fake internal like in our minds sort of we we imprison ourselves in our own thoughts in our own worries and our own insecurities we say i'm not good enough for this i'm not brave enough for this i haven't got the right skills for this i'm not the right person you know i think a lot of the times we think that we have to be good we have to be the best we have to do everything great that we have to be the best people or the most talented people or um the most articulate people which I clearly am not um or whatever it is I think we always have to feel like we're, we're, we're great and we have to be confident and actually the confidence shouldn't come from us and I, I've learned that I've learned that lots of times in my life now that actually it's not about whether we're confident it's whether God's confident and God is always confident in us he says you know what you have got this and you know how I know you've got this because I'm going to be with you I'm going to see you through this I'm going to see you through those challenges and you know, when when things glorify God, when things honor God, when we're loving other people, we love God, right? We show that we love God when we love other people. And I don't think God will ever stand against us loving other people. He will always be for that and he will always help us. He will intervene. He will give us the confidence. He will give us the skills. He will give us the heart in order to go out and love other people. So if you ever feel afraid, like Jonah or like me, about going and showing love to other people, speaking about God to them maybe, even talking about Jesus, remember that God is by your side and you're not doing it alone. And uh, it's my favourite Bible verse. It's Joshua 1 verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you always. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your situation is at the moment. I don't know what challenges you're facing, whether it's, you know, maybe you are about to leave school, uh, you're in year six and you're going to go off to secondary school, or you're moving up a year, or um, I don't know, you might be moving house, or, or maybe just this whole coronavirus thing has really got to you. Remember that. Remember to be strong and courageous, to not be afraid, to not be discouraged but to remember that the Lord, your God, is with you always. And he will give you the confidence. He will give you the strength. He will give you the heart. He will give you the wisdom you need to get through that period of your life. So do not hide your light because you feel like you're not good enough or you're not the right person. When you've got God on your side, you're always the right person. And you will always have the right things you need because God does provide. Next week, we'll be looking at how we can shine our light to other people. Until then, I'll see you, well, I don't know, virtually, I guess.